Hello everyone, our last few devlogs have been focused on getting the game ready for survival mode by adding core features we need. There is one big feature that is missing that has until now made the worlds in Planetsmith feel sterile. It's time to fix that and add AI to the world. AI is one of the big ticket features Planet Smith is missing, and something that must be working before our next playtest. If you want to join the first survival playtest, make sure you head to our Steam page to sign up, and don't forget to add Planet Smith to your Steam wishlist while you are there. AI has been quite the buzzword as of late, but we don't need any fancy neural networks or supercomputers for Planet Smith's AI. We just need to make creatures that can combine together simple rules to get emergent behaviour. This behaviour should be somewhat predictable, that way the player can use their knowledge to exploit weaknesses and control their environment. To start with, what features does our AI need? Senses. A way to detect what's in the world through sight, hearing and other mechanics. Pathfinding. The ability to navigate the changing Hexel planets. Behavioural state machines. This will let us create lots of different types of AI with vastly different behaviours. Stats. Health, attack damage, movement speed, equipment, drops, etc. Basically, lots of levers for us to easily change the balance of a mob. But where do we start? The best place to start is pathfinding. As if our AI can't see or navigate the world, we will be very limited in the behaviours we can make. The most common way to do this, and is the way AI works in 99% of other games you have played, is to use a nav mesh system. Unity has an inbuilt solution for this, so it's a logical choice. However, nav meshes need to be baked. This is normally done in the editor and saved, but with our procedurally generated planets, this isn't an option. We could bake the nav meshes in real time as we explore and change the world. However, this is expensive and slow. But what is a nav mesh anyway? It's just a data structure that maps out the world. It splits up the world into nodes and connections, which can be navigated using a pathfinding algorithm. Our world is already in a data structure as voxel data, so we can skip the middleman and use this data directly instead. But this does mean we can't use any out of the box solutions. We're going to have to write our own implementation from scratch. First things first, we need an AI that can move around on a flat world without any path navigation. Simply just moving from point A to point B. With the basics done, we can get started on creating our pathfinding algorithm. We decided to go with the A star algorithm. It's a very popular pathfinding algorithm and has been covered to exhaustion here on YouTube. So I'm not going to go into deep detail. A star takes the basic flood fill algorithm, which expands out from the starting point, one node at a time, until it touches the target. It then adds one massive optimization to sort the open nodes between each step so the most promising paths are searched first. This greatly reduces computation and means we'll be able to have a lot more AI agents pathfinding at the same time. There are other optimizations you can make with more advanced A star, but that is overkill for just now. Now that we know how A star works, we should figure out how it's going to work in 3D with our hexagonal world. Well, it turns out that it will work pretty much the same way as it would in 2D. We just need to add a check to see if the next block is at the same ground height as the one we're currently on. If it isn't, we can see if it's one block above or below the current block. Then, after checking, we can reach this next block 
we add it to the list. We also need to check if the block is navigable. For example, the AI shouldn't navigate into lava or some other hazard. If that's the case, we don't add it to the open list. The other thing we do is we add a penalty for water blocks. That way, the AI will choose to go around water rather than wade through it. And it even has a heavier penalty if the AI has to swim. That way, an AI will still be able to cross water if it needs to, but it will do it as a last resort. We can of course change this block preference pathfinding between different AI. That way we can make some A that chooses to stay in water or have a mechanic with some other type of block. The last thing we need to consider is the world changing after a path has been found. If a player places or removes a block that is on the path, we need the AI to detect this and recalculate its navigation path. Great! We have basic pathfinding. Our AI can navigate and explore the world. However, they look to be zigzagging all over the place. This looks quite unnatural. What's going on? Because our pathfinding is looking at the world as blocks, we are navigating between block centres and the AI is following a path between the centre of every block on its route. This is fine when an AI is navigating along one of the hex directions, but when it's navigating diagonally, this means it will move in this zigzag pattern. What we want the AI to do instead is simplify its path where possible to create more straight lines, fixing the zigzagging issue. We can do this by detecting a diagonal movement. With hexagons, we can use cubic coordinates and use the fact that one of the cubic coordinates remains the same when traveling along a hexagonal axis. Therefore, if all three coordinates change, we know that we have done a diagonal move. We can then check if the two shared blocks between the diagonal are navigable, and if they are, we can safely remove the middle navigation point, creating a straight path. Looking back at our AI in the game, that looks a lot better. Our AI is walking nicely in all directions now. So now that the pathfinding is working, we can move on to the AI's senses, as it's currently oblivious to the player or any other AI. But we're going to save that for the next devlog along with adding different behaviours to our AIs. A big thank you to our YouTube members who are helping make these videos possible. Remember, our next playtest and first look at survival mode is getting close. Join our Discord linked on screen now if you want more info or alerts when it goes live. Thanks for watching.